Have you looked at the real estate? Are you buying a home, selling a home during COVID-19? It's crazy, right? To even think about getting into the real estate business, but a lot of people are. We're gonna learn about the real estate business from two experts today. Who's gonna tell us how they were able to close 12 properties in 12 months and how you can do the same thing. Find out more coming up next. <music> We have a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about real estate and we have two experts. We have Canada's top investing, investing and mentoring couple, Mel and Dave Dupree. They're going to be joining us and we're going to talk about real estate in North America as a whole and how COVID-19 has affected the industry, but their story on how they have been able to get through this and not only do that, but create a business model so other people can also get in on the action, on the real estate action, and why real estate is an amazing thing to be invested in and sell. A lot of people are looking for this a job that they never thought of. Maybe it's time for a career change. If your job is furloughed or you're still waiting to get back to work, maybe it's time to pick up the second gig. A lot of classes out there and Mel and Dave are here today to help you guide you along the path and get started on your journey. So let's get to the point with Mel and Dave. How are you guys doing today? Hey, we're great. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm laughing. I'm in this little box below you guys talking to you. So it's always fun to be like, hi, hello. But Real estate. Uh, 2020 was off to a great year for most of us. Uh, I know the real estate business. I've talked to a lot of my friends, uh, you know, heard from the great Grant Cardone talking about real estate and the COVID-19 hit. And I know it's affected all of us, not just here in the States, but globally. I know Canada. I know your prime minister has done an amazing job with, you know, helping you guys keep it under wraps. I wish we could have taken some pointers. Uh, we've failed miserably at it. But let's talk about how has the real estate business taken a hit or has it taken a hit at all with COVID-19? Yeah, and thanks, Eric, for having us on. That's amazing. Um, honestly, in our experience so far, COVID hasn't really shaken up anything. Uh, and I know it sounds really strange. And, and, you know, a lot of our mentees and our mentorship saying the same thing. Uh, the rents are coming in. And that might be, you know, in part, like you were saying, because the government has been you know, handing out, uh, I think it's served $2,000 a month to basically everyone. Uh, so the rents are still, you know, 90% coming in and uh, the market seems to to still be fairly active. Like when, when buildings are going up and uh, they're, they're, they're getting sold. So income properties are still kind of a hot commodity even during COVID. Yeah, there's still lots of deals going on. We're actively continuing to buy as well. Um, so it didn't slow slow us down whatsoever. Yeah, strangely enough. Strangely enough. So, <laughs> so it's so what I'm reading here, I mean, I've been doing a lot of research on you guys, and I'm blown away. I mean, number one, I am a business partner. My wife is my business partner with our company, Life Flip Media. I, I, I love working with my wife. And I know a lot of people are like working with your significant other. Uh, and I'm like the opposite. I'm like, it's awesome. I love work. I mean, obviously, you guys do too. I mean, and just seeing the sign behind you with the, you know, investor couple that's awesome to do that so before we jump into anything fun what's it like and you can both answer this one at a time not together because that would be just weird and I mean you're way too connected if you're saying things <laughs> at the same time but what's it like working with your spouse in any capacity i love talking about this and mel you can go first yes you know what it's uh I love it. I love it because I used to work, of course, we both used to have full-time jobs before real estate um, or before we grew our portfolio big enough. And uh, I didn't get to pick who I used to work with. And now I get to you know, work with my best friend. And what I love about it is that we really get to work on our goals together. Now, that being said, is there sometimes we, you know, do we, do we bicker a little bit? Yes. But we even share an office, which is, uh, people are always surprised that we actually share an office as well. Um, but we work really well together. We both have our lanes. Um, which I think is very important. So Dave has his responsibilities. I have mine. We'll collaborate and talk, of course, about it all. But it, it works out really well. 
That is awesome. I know a lot of people who struggle with that. In all honesty, they're like, we have to communicate and try to do all of these things in business. But I, I know there's a lot of power couples out there and I include you guys on this list. But I mean, you look at it, you have Grant and Elena Cardone, uh, Cardona, Cardone, duh, Grant Cardone. Uh, and you, you know, you're seeing even like Lewis Howes bring his fiance into his business. And you see that around and it's great because there are, I think married couples, you are working with somebody who reads your mind and you have, you're looking out for each other and growing the business because when you win, it's the ultimate team member to have. And I love that. We have a lot of family on our staff here. And it's just because we all celebrate those victories together, which is different when I came from corporate America. Celebrating victories isn't done the same way as it's done with a smaller grouping. And you celebrate your successes and you can get through your struggles. And sometimes it's hard when it's somebody who's not related to you in a business meeting and you're talking about what our goals are, what our focus are and how to do it. Sometimes people, I always say the yes people that are out there, they won't argue with you. We've all probably hired them. They're like, absolutely, your idea is the best. And you're like, I want you to say the opposite. I want you to tell me I'm wrong and this sucks. Don't just say yes, because if I fail, I'm going to look at you and be like, where were you? Like, if you're that guy in the meeting who's like, oh, I knew this wasn't going to work. But why didn't you speak <laughs> up? So let's talk about this. So you all closed 12 or invested. Let me be, you bought not invested, you bought 12 properties in less than 12 months. How did you guys do that? That sounds amazing. Yes, well, we were, and at the time, yes, I, I, how did we do it? We set massive goals and then we took massive action. Um, we, you know, we knew we wanted to change our lives and we could do so with real estate investing and we decided to be very aggressive so we, through creative financing, so we solely buy them, we don't have any joint venture partners, and with creative financing, that's how we were able to, to grow a portfolio, because otherwise, coming up with a deposit every time, the 20 or 25% down every time, we just didn't have the funds. So once we discovered the power of creative financing, yeah. that's when we were able to explode our growth. And also, Eric, I'm thinking, you know, you're, you're saying, how do we do it? I think the fact that we did it as a couple uh, gave us a unfair advantage, because you know, we're both wanting, wanting the same why. We're both on the same page. So, you know, when I don't want to get up at, at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. before the kids get up to do a couple hours of real estate, Mel's kicking my butt out of bed, right? So, <laughs> and vice versa. So I think having the partner, it, it was a big advantage because, again, of that exact thing. When when I'm down or she's down, the other one's up, the other one's, you know, kind of that uh, that support that uh, so that the chain, the, there's, there's no kinks in the chain. It just keeps going, right? Yeah. I, and I think that's important as people go through business is to have someone that motivates yourself. And I know self-motivation is really difficult for a lot of people. And I read this great book recently, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari, and it talks about setting those goals. And, and I've been talking about this a lot recently on the show, talking about simple things like, do you take an hour out of your out of your weekend on a Sunday when it you know it's slow on a Sunday? We all have those Sundays. Do you take an hour and schedule out your day to take advantage so you're not feeling rushed, so you do have that motivation? And I know it was my business partner and spouse who was like, "That's totally great." And we kind of she used to make fun of it almost back in my startup days when we were I was working in corporate America. Like, why do you do that? And now she did it with her side business that she's launched. And she finds it's easier and easier to run things when you schedule it out and you take the time. It's not some made up thing. You guys aren't just quoting from some book of just amazingness. No, we these are proven things that help us motivate, get out and you know attack the day, adapt and overcome. So let's talk about this next thing here. Uh, all I have in my notes here is the higher crash that changed your lives. Who wants to jump on that first? Yeah, so this was back in 2018. Um, we were on our way to a real estate investing conference and we had a shuttle service. We're in the back of the vehicle and, and on a three lane highway and we didn't see it coming. So out of nowhere, a careless transport driver hit our SUV, which ended up, we ended up rolling across the highway um, four or five times, we yeah. landed upside down. The vehicle was completely crushed and, and uh, everyone there just couldn't believe that we actually survive the crash and you know we have three kids at home so of course as we're going through that we're thinking about our, our children and it was it was a, a life-changing day yeah it, it was just unreal like the uh the provincial police were just we were in a big yukon or suburban and they said if you weren't in a tank of a vehicle uh you wouldn't be you know where you, you wouldn't be walking away from this so uh that was life-changing uh, eric obviously 
And Mel and I used to be very, very secretive with with our information and how we did things. Even our family was... Yeah, my was, mom and parents yeah. would say, like, how, how are you buying all these properties? And like, <laughs> oh, we're, we just started. Did you win the lottery? No, no, we just, you know, we have we have boys, but we wouldn't even share with anyone. We were very secretive. And Dave, you're bang on. It was that day, just completely changed our mind. Light switch. Yeah, it was like, why, instead of being so secretive, why are we not helping other people achieve the same kind of freedom that we were able to achieve. And after the accident, I had a severe concussion and I had a lot of time to reflect. And I kept thinking, at that time I was still working full time, and I kept thinking about going back to work and I would physically feel ill, thinking, yeah. I just don't want to do something I don't love. And you know, with Dave's support saying, well, you're not going back. And that was it, I never went back. Um, it kind of it was the push I needed to finally you know, leave my full-time job. And because I already had a, a nice portfolio, I was able to financially do so. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. I have to tell you both. I interview a lot of people and I love your guys' energy. It's just flowing through the camera to me. I just love every minute of it. And you could just see the passion and drive you have about building your business. I know we all talk about that as entrepreneurs. Some people have it, some people don't. And some people, it just oozes through the camera and you're just like, I just want to catch that in a cup just a little bit to get fired up so I love it so let's talk about helping people and you talked about it let's talk about your mentoring program there's so many people who are interested in real estate I've seen a lot of folks jump into it as you know here in the states we have a huge unemployment problem we're at almost I think it's down a little bit about 38 million it's still a lot 38 million Americans without work and there's so many different businesses that folks get into and we've had folks on this show we've talked about getting a digital, uh, digital, a e-commerce business going, online business going, direct marketing going, and these are all industries that are killing it. But real estate is seems to be resilient. It seems to be like alcohol and in, in firearms here in America, that real estate always stands true. Even through our 08, when we suffered through that horrible foreclosure time, people getting into business and investing properties I think the biggest struggle they have is they don't know where to do it or how to do it and listen to an actual pro. There's a lot of people out there, like I always say, leaning on Lambos on social media, talking about it, but they just come across, you're like, man, but you really live in your basement at your mom's house. You're not really an expert on it and you probably never really bought property. I mean, any of us could quote Grant Cardone. I mean, I could do it, but it doesn't come across the same way. So how have you guys, you know, talk about your mentoring program and what it means to people and how people can sign up. Because I think that's key is having solid mentors. And you two seem to be, number one, the most authentic people I've ever interviewed. And two, just how do people, like, what is the, talk about this mentoring program. I'm so excited to hear about it that I'm kind of stumbling over my own words. Yeah. And thanks for giving us the opportunity to chat about it, Eric. And so what's different about us and what I love about it, we started off, you know, doing beta programs and seeing, like, we truly wanted to make it as best possible for the, the learner. And we started off with beta programs, asking questions, doing surveys, making sure that we were truly answering people's questions the way that they needed to, you know, adult learning, right? So we realized that, you know, a three-month course, a 12-week course, yes, it gives you a lot of knowledge, but there's not that support system. So Mel and I decided to do a lifelong course. Once you sign up a program, mentoring program, once you sign up, it's lifelong. You have access to all the all the different facets for life. And that's because as you're going through real estate, as you know, your problem at the month three and month six and year two are going to be completely different. So that's what we wanted to first off, right off the right out of the gate, lifelong. That's why people can continue learning, continue growing, and then they can help the people that come in and continue to grow and grow the networking. So that was very, very important to us. Um, and just side note there, the, the number, the staggering number you gave me of 38 million uh, unemployment in the States, Canada only has 32 million. So that's more than Canada's entire population. Um, now, that being said, we show people how to buy real estate with none of their own money. And, and that's truly what we specialize in is creative financing, uh, solely owning the real estate. Like, and that is so powerful. Anyone can go do joint venture, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But people can do partnerships, syndications, joint ventures, and, and, and yes, there, you can make a lot of money in that and have you know great financial and freedom and everything. However, Mel and I have truly enjoyed solely owning everything that we have uh, because we're going to be giving that to our kids and creating that generational wealth 
where it's only us making decisions. We don't have to go to a partner or yeah. a board or anything like that. It's 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 us making the decisions. Yeah, and we're it's called the Action Family. It's all about action. Um, so in our Action uh, Mentoring Program, we're very active. We answer questions every single day. We go live with them for over an hour every single week as well for Q and A. So they get us over 52 uh, hours every single year. So we're very, very active and, and that's why most importantly, it's it, to me it wasn't about offering a mentoring program, it was helping others achieve time freedom, location freedom and financial freedom. And what I love the most is seeing the results, right? It yeah. seems like every week I, I get a post or I get tagged in a post of people buying these properties and it's just, I'm so happy and so proud of them because that's the thing, no matter where you're from, I mean, I. I, I was a single mom living in a two-bedroom apartment, right? Did Dave had a had a you know more difficult? He was yeah. We didn't have any money, right? Being the poor kid in a, in your class with people laughing at your shoes isn't a good feeling, right? But no. that's what helps you grow as a person, and and that's why I think we strive so much to help people and and create our own general generational wealth and help them as well. I love that. That's a that is a great answer because again, like I said before, you have you have this genuine like I want to sign up for it, and I don't know why, but I'm like yep, I'm sold. You sold me, and that's that's the problem. My producers sure. keep yelling at me like Eric, you've got to stop signing up for all these courses. I think actually my my boss, my wife, will yell at me if I sign up for anything else in the near future. Uh, but let me ask you this: every like real estate, you hear good things, you hear bad things. Uh, I have to ask you because I just I can't wait to see your guys' response. I want to hear why you guys love real estate. Obviously, there's a lot of things that you could love. People love music. People love the arts. But you got to be. I mean, like there's a lot of realtors and there's lots of attorneys in the world. But you guys clearly love real estate, and it goes through. And then you go look at some testimonials from folks who've been through your program. And they turn out to get the same love of real estate. So what is it about the real estate, which seems to be very frustrating, high winds. I mean, you, it looks like there's money in investing and all this stuff, but why do you love it? I mean, clearly it's more than just what it goes into your bank account. Yes, that's a big part of it because you never see anybody crying on a jet ski. But, uh, you know, why, what's your love? What make, draws you to real estate that makes you actually love it? <laughs> Yeah, and great question, and I'm, I'm thinking of a whole whack of things as you're asking that, Eric. Uh, and just to touch on something you said earlier, um, just it seems as though real estate always kind of survives the, the storm, right? And that's what I love. Like, even during these COVID times, uh, this brick and mortar, this asset, you know, maybe on paper it went down a little bit in evaluation. Okay, I'm a buy and hold. I'm going to hold it forever and give it to my kids. It doesn't matter what it says on paper it's worth because it's going to go back up. Uh, but the rent's still coming in, so the tenants keep paying rent. It's it's something that isn't going away. Shelter and accommodations is never going away, right? So that's what I love. It's tried and true. It's been around. Uh, it's not going anywhere, like I said, even during COVID. The other thing I really enjoy is just, and this was in high school, I remember reading uh, one of my friend's dad had a book, and it was uh, something about real estate and 90% of the millionaires, and I'm not going to throw stats, but some like that were created through real estate, and that just stuck with me forever. And then I started finding out that uh, with real estate, there's it's almost like the government has created the tax, tax system for real estate. Yeah. You get to make money, but you also get to keep it. Yeah, there's a lot of tax benefits as well. And and then there's the whole part that, you know, in reality, you're helping, and if you're going to be a good investor a good yeah. landlord um, you know you're you're providing an essential service right yeah. you're you're helping somebody have a home and I mean we certainly pride ourselves in, in, in always having our standards everything's always fire inspected up to code and and they're nice living arrangements so that way everybody can have a, a nice affordable home which is a cool feeling yeah. right Absolutely. I mean, I think all of us love that. I mean, who doesn't want to own their home, invest in property, make money? And I think the time is now. I mean, we were, we've were we talked to a number of guests who are in the business of making money and teaching others how to be successful and do it. And I think now, I know COVID-19 seems weird, but there's a lot of people. And I think if you're going to look to invest, so this is a question for you. We have a lot of people here in America and a lot of us are season ticket holders. But as you know, just like in Canada, here in America, we can't go to sporting events. So it's pretty much in doubt that next season will we ever have fans involved when all the sports are finally starting here in the States later this month. So where do people, what's your thoughts on people investing that money? I mean, how much does it take? Obviously you said before, you don't even need to invest your own money, you go somewhere else. So 
what's some stuff what what draws people to go do this to me it's like a no-brainer but what are your thoughts on getting people with these objections they have in their head like yeah yeah i've heard this before read a book how do you overcome those objections of the yeah 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 it just seems like those kind of folks you know what i'm talking about those people yeah and naysayers are always going to be there and the thing that Mel and I have noticed is the, the more we grow, the more we're out there, the more naysayers seem to come out of the, the woodworks. But And that's fine because we, we're we not making this up, right? So people ask us questions, that's fine. Um, now, I think the reason why people are more and more gravitating towards real estate is, and I love this saying, I forget where we read it, but the riskiest thing in life is not taking a risk at all, right? So all these people that had these you know, jobs and pensions and all that, they thought they were the safest thing ever. And then I know we keep talking about COVID, but all of a sudden their job isn't there because who predicted COVID, right? So we've had a lot of people come to us who lost their jobs. Both of them have lost their jobs or one of the one of the spouses or the, the single person is now unemployed and they're saying now then now more than ever, I need to get into real estate because I need to control my future. Like I've got kids to feed, like I can't not have a job. And just like yeah. us our buildings can't fire us, right? And it's true. Like when we, so we, Dave was a firefighter. I, I worked for a local college and we both quit our job in our 30s. And when we did, you know, you can imagine what people were saying, like, oh, he's such a risk taker and I could never do that. And, and you're bang on, Dave. You know, not doing anything is a risk also. And I was willing to take educated risks to to change my life and to to help ensure that I'm well structured, you know, and, and to help ensure that my kids would be set up for life as well. And and to me, it's when people don't do anything and stay where they are, that's a big risk. Yeah. So just because you're not taking action doesn't mean you're not taking a risk. You are taking a risk. It might feel more comfortable, but it doesn't mean you're not taking a risk. I, I totally agree. I love that. So final question, and this is we ask all of them. So this is on the spot. You have no idea. Uh, mm-hmm. I know you guys have written some books, but can't you can't list your own book on this. You're gonna you're, Before you go, you're going to get to do the hype piece that I promise all of my guests So because we want people to be able to connect with you. But... Top three books that you like on entrepreneurship. Now, I'll give you, it's your choice because you are a couple. You can either do three books each person or three together. It's your call. I know it's on the spot, but. We'll do it together because they're pretty much the same thing. I think it's going to repeat the same uh, same book. I'm going to throw one at you today that you haven't heard, and I just, uh, I'm I'm thinking of it. Okay. Go ahead. I I can't wait. I love this question. That's why I, I ask all of you successful, awesome entrepreneurs. What's on your bookshelf? What's your reading list? Because knowledge is power and books are the most powerful thing that we can do to go out and do. I can tell you, just sitting in my studio alone, I have about eight books that I'm currently reading. Yes, I have ADD and I just read all the time. I grab a book depending on what mood I'm in and my Audible account kind of references the same thing. So love to hear your guys' book recs. I I love audio books as well. Um, Rich, that for dad for me that's uh, I still remember reading reading or listening to it um, when we were in Florida on a, on a vacation and it certainly that's when that's before we bought the 12 and 12 it just completely changed our mindset mm-hmm. because I used to think you know pay down the mortgage debt is bad and once I realized that good debt can be good it just completely changed uh, the way we thought about money yeah and then um, I almost want to lump them into two because it's Grant Cardone's, his 10X, and That's his... That's cheating. I know, but I'm, <laughs> Eric's going to let me get away with it, I All think. Right. It's my show, my rules. You can do whatever you want. And you're Canadian, so basically you could just do that. Just say we're Canadian, we're better than you, and we can do whatever we want. It's okay. <laughs> we like we love Canadians on our show. Nothing but love. But yeah, I agree with you. Grant Cardone, Grant's... It's hard on Grant. I'll give it to you. It's hard to narrow it down to one Grant book. I mean... So like, Be Obsessed and Be Average gave us permission to... It's okay to work as much as I want. It's okay to to be obsessed with and love what I do. So I like that one and the 10X obviously, the, it helped us with our, to just 10X our vision and if we fail and only get 8X, well, at least we didn't get 2X. So those two for sure. And the one I want to throw at you that we both read and it's been a while is uh, The Secret. Oh my gosh, we haven't mentioned that before. I know, I mean, we've never mentioned that before, but I like yes. it. just the, I remember reading that book, and I think it was in high school, whatever it was, but just the power of positive thinking and visualization like Mel and I are big on vision boards, but this was truly the book that got us thinking that way. Uh, secret here, I had Mel on my vision board, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just that book helped with our. I our, did not have him on my. Vision board. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You're like, no, nah, you weren't on my vision board. Uh, I don't know. Somehow, somehow he convinced me. Yeah, but... I don't know, but it was probably yeah, the power of visualization. So the secret was a very powerful book for mindset. I love that. I mean, I'm a big fan of those. I, I love talking. I mean, mine are a little. I mean, I have. 
Mine seem to rotate. I mean, my favorite, like I'm a big Simon Sinek fan. I'm all about leadership. Uh, I've read all Grant's books. I love Grant's books. Grant's books are just mind blowing for changing business. Uh, Jim Keenan is another one, or he goes by just Keenan. He has Gap Selling and a couple other books. He just talks about a lot of amazing things. So good books out there talking about selling and positive mindset and leadership books. So the one I highly suggest is what I said earlier, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. Just yeah. in a, it's, it's a great book because it's, you know, when you talk about success and so many people look at success as what's in your bank account or the size of your home or the car you drive. And it's a mindset. It doesn't mean that we automatically become thought leaders. And I've interviewed the great guy Kawasaki who came up with, you know, uh, Apple and Steve Jobs and working side by side to me, one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our time being, you know, to me, he's our Einstein. Steve Jobs is a, was amazing. And like he's like Guy said, I asked, I go, what is a thought leader? What who goes around asking to be a thought leader? And he's like, turds. He's like, nobody goes around. He goes, you know how many nanoseconds Steve Jobs spent wondering if he's going to be a thought leader? He's like, you go be authentic. You go out, you do your job and you act accordingly and you build your business and you have your dreams. And you guys have clearly done that with dream boards. I love that we talk about that because people are like, oh, is that real? Do entrepreneurs really do that? The successful ones. And you're both sitting here and I love it. You both have big grins on your face because I know you guys believe in them. Uh, we've had guests on the show who we talk about them and they're key. I write mine in a journal. I'm a big power of journaling. I know big fun of me. I, I love journaling, but vision boards. My wife has one. Actually, two weeks ago we celebrated. She knocked out two things on her vision board in one day. So, congratulations, yeah. Don. Congratulations, That's huge, right, Matt? I mean, I was like raising the roof for that. I was like, woohoo! But you know, uh, and before you guys go, tell folks how they can learn more. Uh, especially share your mentoring program. Uh, everybody, while you're listening and you're looking at me in this little tiny box, uh, <laughs> it's true. Wait till you see. I'm down in a little tiny box. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we're going to have all the links to the book both Mel and Dave suggested. So we'll have their book recommendations and a link to their books so you can get them. But tell the folks how they'll reach out you on social so we'll grow your following even more. Uh, you have an amazing following on Instagram, so make sure you follow them. But how can folks learn about your mentoring program and uh, follow you on social? Yes, absolutely. We post every single day and we're on all social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, um, like LinkedIn, I can go on. But yes, Investor Mel Dave, that's always our username. So Investor Mel Dave, you can go on our website as well, which is www.investormeldave.com. And for those listening who want to find out a little bit more about how did you guys do it, how did you grow your portfolio, um, we have a free masterclass, it's completely free. You can go to www dot 12 in 12 months.com and it's a number so www.12 in 12 months.com and we talk about the strategies we use to grow a portfolio i love it and i want to thank you guys so much for joining us today you have been delightful awesome perfect for going into the weekend it's always great to talk and learn about something that we don't talk about a lot right investing you know, yes, you could see Grant Cardone talks about it, but Grant talks about a lot of things at a very high volume. And sometimes you're just like, Grant, what the heck did you just say, man? You're moving too fast for me. Uh, I love him and Brandon Dawson dearly. They just move really fast. So it's good to hear you guys and see the passion and belief in it. And I encourage everybody to go follow them on their Instagram at Investor Mel and Dave. They have an amazing following, so go check them out. And also sign up for these mentoring classes. I know you're probably going to see me in one of your classes very soon. Perfect. So awesome. thank you guys. Hold on, I'm going to go back in my little box. Hold on, I got to go back here. We're going back in my little box. Hold on, I'm messing this up. Here we go. Hold on, I got to get my little... Oh, I'm in my little box. That way I can say goodbye. But I want to thank you guys for joining us today. Mel and Dave, thank you so much for taking your time out of your busy schedule to come on and share your message with our folks. I Thank you so much. We'll have you on really soon. Yes, it's awesome. our pleasure. Thank yes. you so much, Eric. You're such a great guy. So thanks thank for you having so much. us. Appreciate thank you it, so Eric. much. Get to the point with Eric Mitchell. Mitchell, Mitchell. Yeah. Let's get to the point.